Okay. So, but then what about, remember last year? Well, good morning and welcome everyone to today's webinar hosted by the Schuyler Center for Analysis and Advocacy and the Postpartum Resource Center of New York. I am Bridget Walsh, Senior Policy Analyst at the Schuyler Center. Um, we're going to begin in just a few minutes, but in the meantime, in order to get to know our audience a little better, you will see three poll questions appear in just a moment. Please note that these are optional and that if you do decide to participate in any poll questions, your answers will be anonymous. The results of the polls will be shared during the webinar today. Hi everyone, I'm going to leave the poll up for about one minute uh, to allow everyone who's coming in to get a chance to answer the questions. All right, thank you guys. I will go ahead and end the poll now. And I will share the results. I'm going to leave the results up for about half a minute just so we can get an idea of who's here today. Great, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, again, I'm Bridget Walsh, Senior Policy Analyst at the Schuyler Center. We're excited to offer this presentation in the MOMD webinar series in collaboration with the Postpartum Resource Center of New York. The Schuyler Center is a statewide nonpartisan advocacy organization primarily focused on improving policies for those living in poverty, particularly children and families. The MOMD project, or Moving on Maternal Depression, work is part of our continuing efforts to connect and improve care and resources for pregnant and parenting women and their children. Moving on maternal depression was part of a national learning collaborative to advance policies that improve prevention, screening, and treatment with an emphasis on racial equity and culturally relevant practices in policy and systems management. Here in New York, we expanded the focus to include maternal mental health more broadly. And while the national project has wrapped up, we hope to develop a state-level learning collaborative that can share best practices and information on maternal mental health issues here in New York. One of the projects for the MOMD initiative is the webinar series. Um, I would also like to introduce our intern, Brittany Eskew. You've heard Brittany uh, just a minute ago with the polls. She will be available in the chat for any technical questions that you have. Uh, this webinar is approved for one continuing edu education unit for New York State licensed social workers and New York State licensed mental health counselor at a cost of $15. Helping Hand Psychotherapy is recognized by the New York State Education Department State Board for Social Work as an improved provider for continuing education for licensed social workers and by the State Board of Mental Health Practitioners as an improved provider of continuing education for licensed mental health counselors. Brittany will post a link in the chat for those who would like to take part in the CE unit. Um, and before we introduce our speaker, we'd like to ask two more poll questions. Uh, remember that these are optional and anonymous questions, but their answers will help us uh, um, understand the audience a little better. Uh, the answers will be displayed for you to see in a, just a moment. So Brittany, do you wanna bring up our next questions? There we go. Great, thanks guys. So I'm going to leave this set up for about one minute as well. If you feel comfortable answering these, please do so. I 
again, these, uh, these questions are optional and anonymous. We're just trying to get a better feel um, for the audience and also um, you know, to help us planning for future events. Great, thank you. I'm going to go ahead and end the poll now and share these results. And I'll leave them up for just a few seconds again so we can get an idea of what the audience looks like today. Great, thank you guys. Okay. So before we move on, uh, as we move on to the presentation, um, I'm going to uh, introduce Sonia Murdoch, who's our speaker today. Many of you know Sonia, and if you've worked with the MOMD project at all, been on these webinars in the past, you've met Sonia. Um, she does a lot of work around the state with the Postpartum Resource Center, um, and, uh, and not only in New York, but um, nationally, internationally as well. We thought it would be good to actually have Sonia present because we get so many questions. Um, she gets so many questions too about um, the work that they do at the Postpartum Resource Center of New York. And we wanted to make sure that you all understood the uh, resources that they have, the contacts they have, and how um, Sonia and the Postpartum Resource Center may be able to help you in your own work. Um, so you see Sonia's bio there, and it'll be uh, included in the um, the presentation at the end, um, but I'm going to um, invite Sonia now to share her screen um, and bring her on so she can talk a little bit uh, more about her work at the Resource Center um, and what they do. Great. Thanks so much, Bridget, and it's a great pleasure to be with everybody here today and a big thank you to the Schuyler Center for the partnership with presenting this webinar series. I also do want to mention, um, added to my bio, just as of last week, I was invited to participate on the New York State Maternal Mortality and Morbidity Advisory Council. So very important work there, and I do want to um, share that um, with everyone. So as we get started here, I'm going to share my his screen. Just a moment. Um, second. Looking for my presentation now. Um, just a moment. Nope. Sorry about that. It was there before I started. May just take a minute. Sorry about that. We had practice before um, I went on. Okay, it was here. Just a moment. I apologize about this. I will um, begin with the story here as I work this out. Um, with perinatal mood and anxiety disorders, um, that everybody plays a role in the safety net here. And um, with everybody coming together here, that with um, perinatal mood and anxiety disorders, if you think about it, unfortunately, a lot of times, though, we're putting the onus on the mother and her family to reach out and find the help that they need um, for what many women say is a traumatic life event. And the recent research with Dr. Walker Ladd and her book, Transformed by Postpartum Depression, we're hearing these stories of women and them sharing from trauma 
And just most recently, hearing from a New York State mom <clears throat> where she did not have, um, she was diagnosed with postpartum depression, and then her healthcare team really didn't know what to do next. Where do you go? Where do you get the help and support? And that's why I'm grateful with um, our presentation here today to share with you resources as well as the work of the Postpartum Resource Center of New York. So again, I apologize if you just bear with me and I look to pull this up. Bridget or Brittany, if you can let me know if my screen is being shared. <laughs> it looks like it's in the process of sharing. It hasn't come through okay, yet. Okay, thank you. Yeah, okay. you're welcome. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we are. So sharing about building a safety net for New York State families and communities. And our goal this morning is to further identify what is peer support, but specifically what is the role of peer support when it comes to addressing maternal mental health. Hi, also further learning about community collaborations for maternal mental health, as well as resources that can be well, of help. Yes. So, yeah. yes. We're not um, seeing your screen come through. We're not seeing your screen, it's black. You're sharing it, but it's black on our end. Okay, just a moment. Yeah, I would um, stop sharing and then see if you can um, share it again. There we go. Okay. That looks good. Do you now see I it now? Yep, and just yes. the slideshow. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Just a second. It says on screen sharing. Just a moment. Yep. I may just have to keep my um, slides on the side. It's not allowing me to start and do full screen. So I'm just going to continue on. Okay. Okay. So um, went through the goals. Okay. So for, I have this here because um, having a new baby join the family is a very joyous occasion. And for the majority of families in New York, but for a particular population at risk for experiencing a perinatal mood and anxiety disorder, unfortunately, it can be a time of great stress or crisis. What has been addressed in previous webinars, if you haven't been able to um, join any of them before, I um, strongly suggest that you um, go back onto the Schuyler Center's website and we've had previous um, presenters present on health, um, racial equity, also the overview of perinatal mood and anxiety disorders in relation to how it affects families. So there's much more information there, but to lay the groundwork here with, even though I say maternal mental health or postpartum depression, what I'm really um, speaking about is the overall umbrella that here at the Postpartum Resource Center of New York, we address perinatal mood and anxiety disorders, also known as PMADs, or some people say PMADs. So this is an umbrella term, and it's depression, anxiety disorders that can occur anytime during pregnancy, the first year postpartum. Also, it can occur after that first year postpartum when um, women are weaning from breastfeeding, and also I do want to mention the ever-growing research with documenting uh, per, um, paternal depression, depression in fathers. So we also help dads. So the prevalence of perinatal mood and anxiety disorders, as you can see here, as well as this is what's included in the umbrella. So depression and anxiety during pregnancy, 
also postpartum. It includes obsessive compulsive disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, bipolar disorder, as well as postpartum psychosis. I really, I emphasize here, even though so many people are familiar with postpartum depression and thinking of a down mood with women, but um, a lot of growing research is showing the high um, overlap with depression as well as with anxiety symptoms. And in some populations, they be believed to be actually, uh, anxiety may be even more prevalent. With um, maternal mental health issues, it's important to also think about with the, the families that you're helping and the communities that you're serving. We say that with maternal mental health, you, it's very important to look to connect the dots. So these other um, issues that we um, are highlighting here today, maternal mortality, racial disparities, trauma, specifically with the adverse childhood um, experiences, opioid crisis, the, early, the importance of the early years with the first 1,000 days, access to care. And unfortunately, right now with the pandemic, the other main issue that we have seen over and over again, really from the very start of the pandemic, has been the increase in domestic violence with the overlay of maternal mental health issues. We are in a major mental health crisis right now also. And um, so again, appreciate this opportunity to share information with you here today. Just most recently with the New York State Maternal and Child Health Needs Assessment, I would uh, highly suggest if you are not familiar with it or if you haven't had a chance to um, look at this great work that with the Department of Health, with um, being on a recent Community Partners webinar, as well as um, reviewing this report, certain um, key items stood out for us at the Resource Center, where actually um, it documented the increase in postpartum depression with um, women in New York State, as well as then through their listening visits and their work, that many times it was brought up that women in the community are looking for resources for postpartum depression, as well as services, additional supports, and the importance of access to care, as well as health equity. So why should, why should we all care? Um, I know that you care if you're spending your time here today, so I, I appreciate that. But Dr. Philip Boyce, the past president of the Marseille Society, and Marseille Society is the group of researchers worldwide, and now there's also what's called the Marseille of North America, MONA. And um, Dr. Boyce has um, shared why we should all care about maternal mental health three key reasons. Number one, it is the most common medical complication related to childbearing. So at least 10% of women during pregnancy, 20% or more after having a baby. And then in regards to fathers, 10 to 13% will go through a um, paternal um, parental mental health complication. Number two reason why we should all care is unfortunately tragic consequences when this illness is undetected, undiagnosed, untreated, as well as undertreated. And then also why we should all care is that, thank goodness, it is a treatable illness. I believe um, point number three, the importance of that, of why we should all care, is also that it's a quality of life issue. I've been fortunate to present at the United Nations twice, and besides presenting on maternal mental health as a major public health concern, but really a quality of life issue. And not just for that mother, but also for the father, the partner, the um, baby, the children, but also for each of us in society. So very important that we address this um, parental mental health, so the mental health of the parents. I will briefly share with you why I care. This is my sister and my brother-in-law, and my sister and brother-in-law, we, they were expecting their first baby. 
and it was the first baby of um, this new generation in our family. We were so very excited, and being a an aunt, becoming an aunt for the first time, I said I created a new level of happiness. So I wasn't even on cloud nine all the time. Um, I was on cloud ten. And I couldn't wait to get to the, um, the baby sales at Macy's, and I couldn't wait for this um, new baby to join our family. Unfortunately, my sister had risk factors for postpartum depression that my family, we didn't have a clue, we weren't educated, we kind of maybe knew about the baby blues. But unfortunately, after a few weeks after my niece Lauren was Lauren was born, my sister began to hear things that were not there, see things that weren't there, um, had paranoia. And one day she ran out of the house screaming down the street. And thank goodness my brother-in-law was there. My mother and I, we got a frantic phone call. And then I got this phone call where your sister, she is, um, she's in the emergency room, she's at the hospital. So our family not being educated about a connection with anything with mental health and childbearing that we immediately thought, does she have an infection? Does she have a fever? Um, is she bleeding? Um, all physical um, conditions, nothing mental, mental related. And when we went to the emergency room, we knew that something was seriously wrong. All the staff, at the emergency room was kind of hush hush with us. There was a lot of seriousness. And then I was ushered, we were ushered down to the end of a hallway with a room with a door. And our experience, or maybe a lot of people's experience with an emergency room, that usually, you know, it's kind of like cubicles with curtains, things like that. And it was kind of like, why are we going down to this room? And as we open the door, it is something I will always remember seeing. My sister sitting on a gurney with just this blank look at her eyes. She wasn't speaking to us. And we just kept saying, what's wrong with her? Why is she here? What's happening? Nobody gave us any explanation. What happened next, I share in every single training that we do. Uh, I was then waiting in the little family waiting room there. And all of a sudden, a gentleman walked in. And when the gentleman walked in, he said, don't worry, everything's going to be okay with your sister. And this is before HIPAA laws and everything, but I was just kind of like, how does he know about my sister? Um, why is he mentioning her? Um, really, maybe it's none of his business. But all of a sudden, he said, don't worry, everything's going to be okay with her. I once prevented my sister from throwing her baby out the window. So if you could just imagine, all of a sudden, I went from being a new aunt on cloud, <laughs> cloud 10, level 10, and all of a sudden I was just like, oh my gosh, how could he be um, saying that or comparing what my sister's going through to something that his sister went through? And it sounded so awful. And this gentleman, he walked around the room um, there was a table there with some well-worn magazines and he straightened, it, straightened them up. He walked to the door. All of a sudden, um, he emptied the trash there and he was there at the doorway and he said, don't worry, everything's going to be okay with your sister. I share that every single presentation because that gentleman from everybody we came across in our journey from the start he probably was the most educated person from his own family experience. And I always say if he had had like a brochure in his back pocket, pulled it out, he could have said, oh, here's, here's a phone number that you can talk to other families who've been through this. And um, eventually my family got connected after a lot of hard work to an international organization called Postpartum Support International. But I share that story with you because the, the ER staff, later when my sister was admitted to the psychiatric unit, later we met with the social worker, later her OBGYN, the pediatrician, finding out about other hospital staff, no one ever 
gave us information about postpartum psychosis or postpartum depression. No resources, no information, nothing. So it was a major crisis in our family. And I shared that because that gentleman who I met in that family waiting room, he actually worked for housekeeping at the hospital. So that's why I care and feel so passionately about this and want to make sure that we really set up every single New York family, state family to succeed when it comes to their mental health. And my family, I feel very blessed that we have a really great outcome. And here's my niece, Lauren, today, who is uh, doing wonderfully, as well as my brother-in-law and sister-in-law are um, very happy and doing great today. So that's why I care. So moving on, why are perinatal mood and anxiety disorders not recognized? And many times we hear from moms that there's a great sense of fear and guilt, and they're afraid to speak out because they're afraid that somebody will take their baby away or label them as a bad mom. Also, when everybody else is giving that pressure that this should be a very happy time, you have a beautiful baby, what's wrong with you? You should be happy. Also, especially if you're working with first-time parents, they may not know what are symptoms, signs and symptoms of a perinatal mood and anxiety disorder. So they may just assume that what they're going through is normal. So unfortunately, it's not recognized because of ignorance or then even denial. And then lastly, the importance of looking to where we can have standardized screening protocols because what further is keeping women and families from getting to the help they need is that there needs to be the incorporation of PMAD prevention, education, screening, and support services into that standard of care. So moving on now to the role of peer support and the, the distinction also of peer, incorporating peer support when it comes to maternal mental health. So peers are that with that shared lived experience with a particular experience, situation, or event providing a mutual bond and sense of we're all in this together. And this is from the Maternal Mental Health Leadership Alliance, a national organization who has great resources and we partner with also. So with the peer support programs, according to Mental Health America, in general, peers help to increase social support, participation in the community. It helps to reduce um, symptoms of low self-esteem, that helps with social functioning. It also can help, peer support can help also with decrease or even prevent um, hospital stays, cost of services, and it also encourages more thorough and long-lasting recoveries. So specific peer support when it comes to maternal mental health. Jane Honickman, the founder of Postpartum Support International, as well as the founder of the Postpartum Action Institute, has um, defined four main peer support, types of peer support when it comes to working with moms. So maybe you can think about this with your current programs where you are um, have incorporated this or maybe thinking about where you would like to further increase um, these types of peer support. So there's emotional support, practical support, information, and companionship. So with emotional support, that also includes the sharing of moms. And again, right away, these moms will say, once they are able to share, they feel a great sense of relief because they feel that they're sharing with people who, who get it, who've been there. It also um, creates this real great um, sense of caring and that they feel very accepted. Also practical support or practical support sometimes we call um, hands-on support or concrete support. So with help with preparing meals, or especially right now with COVID, maybe providing meals, meal train, meal cards. Um, also with help with doing laundry, house cleaning, watching children, running errands. So the importance of 
including many of these besides family and friends, but also doula support and knowing that doulas are a very important part of the safety net. Informational support, this is further, we're providing guidance and suggestions, but also information and resources. And as you'll learn later on with the Postpartum Resource Center of New York, we're helping in that area to especially help these women and families, as well as all of you, to further help you not reinvent the wheel. There are a lot of different tools, information out there that can further be incorporated into existing programs or looking to further um, provide guidance and suggestions. And then the last type of peer support is companionship. So providing that sense of belonging. And as I mentioned in the beginning, really um, these moms right away with connecting peer to peer will say that they knew that they were not alone in what they were going through. Many times being connected to peer support is that difference with um, sometimes for some women, I would say the difference between life and, and death where it's really giving them hope that they will also recover. So the importance of value of peer support. So it's this opportunity of these new moms to connect. Also what was mentioned in the, um, the state report was that a lot of moms and families are feeling isolated and their, their report and their information was pre-pandemic. And we know from the work we're doing, and I'm sure each of you have your stories right now with um, the stressors and what's happening with COVID, but the, the importance of lessening isolation for these moms and families. Also knowing that other moms are coping with a PMAT, and also again, how peers can share from their own personal experiences, and these moms can learn that they can get through these challenges of parenthood. So also the importance and the value of peer support is that support groups are a, real, a, a safe space and a not judgmental space. So where some moms will say, you know, I know I could not share this in a regular new moms group or parenting group, but coming here with other moms going through a PMAD, it's, it's okay to share my scary thoughts and I won't be judged for that. And other people will not be afraid and thinking that they need to take away my children. Also, again, it's the decreasing the stigma, the shame, and peer support is offered for free. So again, that importance of access to this very valuable part of the safety net. Just very quickly, I had included some slides here that you can um, have this information or look through later. But again, the importance that we make addressing maternal mental health, parental mental health, a high priority. Because unfortunately, there can um, be, again, the devastating consequences when this illness is not addressed. So um, implica impl implications of um, not identifying PMADs and everything from where we're addressing the um, risks during pregnancy um, to the unborn baby, as well as um, unfortunately on the very serious um, side, infanticide, filicide, suicide, homicide. I will also um, point out here the, um, the connection with parenting behaviors. There is research that also shows that parents going through a PMAD are less likely to engage in safe sleep practices, um, also less likely to um, engage in safety practices in the home with childproofing. And unfortunately, again, on the severe end with not addressing perinatal mood and anxiety disorders can lead to child abuse and neglect. So I share, I share these um, two books with you to really point out the, um, the titles. If you can see here and maybe see kind of the difference in the titles here, and to us, this shows progression. With um, the one book, 
Um, and actually both of these um, books I want to highlight and very proud of our volunteer network to volunteers from the Postpartum Resource Center of New York. We have others also who've become published authors. Wendy Isnardi um, wrote one of the first books sharing about her story her personal experience of experiencing postpartum depression and obsessive compulsive disorder. If you note the title there, it's Nobody Told Me. But then about 10 plus years later, we have Bridget Krautow. Um, in a giving birth and raising her um, family with her husband in a community in Suffolk County that has continued to build a perinatal mood and anxiety disorder safety net. So if you were to read each of these books, you could see the difference with um, the different activities with so many community partners coming together. So first we have Nobody Told Me, then we have Me Again, How Postpartum Depression and Anxiety Transform My Life. So um, very good example there, progress, and we hope to work with each of you to have that, that progress in your own communities. So moving on then to community collaborations and resources. So I'll be sharing some examples of different partnership work that we've had. And the research shows this is overall with health systems, but it's also with communities, the importance of having established and supportive relationships. And that the moms and families feel that what they are experiencing is legitimized and taken seriously that they are provided outreach and follow-up, and the importance, the importance of addressing the timeliness of care. So with many partners we work with, they have um, built into their protocols fa fast-tracking moms. There's no waiting three months for an appointment. It's, this is very serious, and we need to see this woman as soon as possible. So, and we hope to work throughout the state that moms and families get the, um, that quick access to quality care. So also patient education, help seeking facilitators. Research has shown, again, the importance of the education overall to the public, the patient, the support system, the sharing of time, and again, the knowledge and sharing of postpartum depression resources. The Postpartum Resource Center of New York, our vision project is called Project 62. And we launched Project 62 to strengthen perinatal mental health parent support networks and safety nets in all 62 counties throughout New York State by collaborating with community partners. We kicked off Project 62 in September of 2015 with a collaboration with Buffalo State College. And I'm happy to say that we have a really great um, team there with a, um, so many collaborating partners, which actually would need to have a whole other webinar on its own with its accomplishments. So really kudos to Western New York and so many partners there. So our goal with Project 62 is we want to make sure that New York State families at risk or affected by a perinatal mood and anxiety disorder, that they're aware of it and have access to education, treatment, and support services for the prevention and recovery of PMATs. With the mission of the Postpartum Resource Center of New York, we are increasing awareness and access to care for New York State families at risk or experiencing a perinatal mood and anxiety disorder. We want to overall save lives, build healthy families for vibrant New York State communities. We know that one of the very first steps to wellness is education. So we look to incorporate and we um, share this with you and encourage everybody to further have that, that training, that information on feeling comfortable to talk about perinatal mental health with moms, with families. So incorporating different questions with the moms and many moms will say that once they know that a provider um, someone in the community is speaking with them and asking them these questions. Many times they do feel better and feel safe. So um, we, we encourage you to incorporate 
different um, questions as training, feeling comfortable. So with the maternal depression peer support program with the Postpartum Resource Center of New York, back in 1998, the Postpartum Resource Center of New York was formed. I do want to mention actually 1998 that New York State was the very first state in the country to also have a public health law on postpartum depression education, stating that all hospitals and birthing centers are to provide information on postpartum depression. Unfortunately, our public health law came about as a result of a tragedy. Former state senator, or retired state senator Hugh Farley had a staffer who went through postpartum psychosis and unfortunately completed suicide. So that is how further that the state senator um, became aware of the connection with maternal mental health and his role, he created this public health law. So that's why I encourage all of you today, as you're getting this information, bringing this more top of mind, when you go back today um, to your programs, to your communities, really encouraging everyone to look how you can further be proactive. We don't wanna be reactive here. And with our peer support program, we have a legislative um, grant and working with the Department of Health, and we provide a statewide toll-free helpline. So what is to be expected when um, somebody reaches out to the statewide toll-free helpline? Just to let you know, ever since the um, pandemic in March, usually our helpline is Monday through Friday, and we're a helpline, not a hotline. So it's Monday through Friday, nine to five. But ever since March 14th, we have been seven days a week. So we are providing free and confidential emotional support, educational information, and healthcare and support group resources. We also have a second tier of support, which is called Moms on Call, as well as family telephone support. Moms on Call are peers who have experienced a PMAD, who've recovered, who've been trained to offer that peer-to-peer free and confidential, non-judgmental mom phone chat. So they are available seven days a week, nine o'clock in the morning to nine o'clock at night. We emphasize those moms on call are not emergency people. So it's peer to peer. We also have family telephone support. Those are grandparents who can speak to grandparents. We have dads who can speak to dads. We have siblings who can speak to siblings. We also have a statewide perinatal mood and anxiety disorders resource directory that we have um, free 24-7 um, access right there on our website. Our goal is that all 62 counties will be represented in that resource directory. And right now, we, with the resource directory, it is um, searchable by, um, Let's see, it is a searchable um, resource directory database. We also have a PDF. We also have a Google map. So we encourage people to also um, access that resource directory. We also have our training institute where we do um, different trainings, um, in-service workshops, and one particular training that we do is on our Circle of Caring Support Group program. And the Circle of Caring Support Group program is a program that we created in the year 2000. It is a program that has been successfully replicated at healthcare centers, maternity hospitals, as well as through community-based organizations, including Mitch programs. And also we have a, what's called the Lisa Mary Riley Visioning Educational Series. This is where we gather um, professionals, people in the community who are looking to move the dial on an issue. So we have hosted in the past a guest speaker from the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. They were the first in the country to have an inpatient dedicated unit for psychiatric unit 
for moms and pregnant women. So we hosted them. We also hosted Dr. Margaret Howard. She is the creator of what's called the um, day treatment program at Mothers and Infants Hospital in Providence, Rhode Island. We've also hosted Jane Honigman, the founder of Postpartum Support International, and also hosting um, Cheryl Beck, who is a nurse researcher in this field, and we have been hosting her to share her research on birth trauma. We also have an initiative called Take Care of You for the younger generation, and we also serve for the International Organization Postpartum Support International, the Postpartum Resource Center of New York. We serve as their lead coordinator for PSI. So with patient education, we um, also a very popular area on our website, it's called sharing our stories of hope and healing. So different moms are sharing their stories and we know that is a very important way to break through stigma. Also with patient education, anyone who's interested, we have our POM cards for free that are covered under the grant. We also have corresponding posters and we also have our ask the question campaign and with ask the question our question mark is the symbol here ask the question asking a mom or dad to be a parent to be a new parent how are you doing how are you feeling hear their answer and then if we have concerns with what they're sharing that we direct them to the help they need. So in different communities, we have rolled out the campaign with different, inf different information. And then also with, um, let's see, promotional materials. So ask the question. So with that, we also, um, our Take Care of You initiative. We have young people involved who are the parents of the future. We have our program that has been rolling out in high schools, and they are involved with the wellness activities that they have identified that are important for them. We also have our annual Santa Silence Run Walk, Stroller Walk, and I hope that you'll join us next year virtually. Um, that will be in May, and Santa Silence is our fundraising committee. We always encourage everyone to include suicide prevention resources. Another program that we want to make sure that everyone is aware of is through the New York State Office of Mental Health and through Governor Cuomo's Maternal Depression Initiative. And there is Project Teach. So I wish that we were in person right now. I would be asking everybody, by, you know, have you heard of Project Teach? And it would be important to know that um, Project Teach is um, providing free consultation to prescribers throughout New York State and mental health resources, advice, and directions for patients. So a very important resource for everybody to be aware of and to um, take advantage of that consultation um, that is available by experts. I want to make sure that everybody is aware then of these further community resources. So a few years ago, we do have, as I mentioned at UNC Chapel Hill, they have um, their dedicated inpatient unit through Zucker Hillside Hospital. A few years ago then, they created and um, continue to have the first perinatal inpatient unit in the Northeast of the country. So that's at Zucker Hillside Hospital. So that's, that is specialized dedicated unit if mothers need to be psychiatrically hospitalized during pregnancy or um, postpartum. Then also similar to that program in Rhode Island, now through the Motherhood Center of New York. The Motherhood Center of New York is the first standalone day treatment program specific for maternal <laughs> mental health. And 
um, during the pandemic that they have been able to successfully bring all of their programs over virtually and now just not treating uh, moms from the New York Metro downstate area, they are actually able to be available to moms all throughout New York State. Another day treatment program, and this through the Office of Mental Health, has been through um, the Perinatal Mental Health Clinic at Hutchings in Syracuse. So again, very important programs for everybody to be aware of. So I want to, um, as getting close to um, wrapping up here, I want to share a few different um, examples of further community collaborations to give you ideas of what's possible. Um, or I would love you know, to be in touch with you after this if you have been doing other work that would be good for other people in the state to be aware of and to be connected to the Postpartum Resource Center of New York with our Project 62. In Suffolk County, Suffolk County about 10 years became the first county in New York State to have a law on perinatal mood and anxiety disorders awareness. So every single May, it is a law that the Suffolk County Office of Women's Services will have an awareness event for Suffolk County residents for the past 10 years. We have many partners with that. And one particular partner and an activity that has also occurred during the month of May in Suffolk County has the Resource Center working in close contact with the Long Island Doula Association, where we do a one day um, doula training workshop where we have um, CEUs available through doulas of North America. We always look to include peer supporters in our trainings. Very important to be sharing that voice of those with lived experience. And this is um, Chanel Jones, who participates on the Moving on Maternal Depression Voices Work Group, which I'll um, talk about in a minute. Um, this then from Suffolk County, um, we have had success then moving over into the corresponding county of Nassau County. And in Nassau County, through the Nassau County Perinatal Services Maternal Mental Health Work Group, they have included maternal mental health work plan, um, an annual um, work plan. They've hosted conferences. They participated in our Sound of Silence run event. They have made as a, um, a proclamation lighting of their dome. And then also all maternity hospitals have been trained in the circle of caring program. Those are um, trained facilitators. We also have uh, different hospitals in Nassau County who have further taken on maternal mental health and in different ways, making sure that screening education is happening. Also, this is an example that in Nassau County that we all work together in creating the uh, You Are Not Alone campaign and having um, educational information go out, um, spread far and wide, and then including crisis, um, crisis resources as well as other key treatment resources in the area. Also in Nassau County, um, Big congratulations to EOC in Nassau County, their um, Mitch program, who does an amazing, amazing job with their Circle of Caring Support Group program. And a lot of moms who have gone through their program really come back full circle and get involved in their agency and their work. So um, very great example. Also in with the um, Nassau County group, they co-hosted Cheryl Beck with the Lisa Mary Riley Visioning Education Series. So with the Ask the Question, Ask the Question campaign and further with Project 62, we have um, worked with um, agencies in Rockland County, um, also in well, with the Department of Health in Rockland County also, and also with the Better Baby Care campaign with their mental health subcommittee. We've hosted, if anybody has not yet seen or heard of Dark Side of the Full Moon, that is a documentary that we highly um, suggest 
that is um, viewed by you, viewed by people in your community. We host Dark Side of the Full Moon events and we're looking forward to hosting them virtually. One of our Project 62 partners is author Nina Giles, who is the author of The Bridesmaid's Daughter, an excellent book that we also suggest. Uh, Nina's mom was a bridesmaid, a best friend of Princess Grace Kelly, and her mom experienced um, postpartum mental illness, and we posted Nina. We've worked with uh, WIC agencies throughout the state, Brooklyn, Queens, and here as I wrap up, this is um, a training that we did in collaboration. We work a lot with um, different collaborated partner partners in um, Buffalo. So what has gotten us here is um, our, our work and partnership with the Schuyler Center. And we're very grateful for their maternal, moving on maternal depression project, where within the project, they also have included what's called the Voices Work Group. And this is a group of women um, who have been sharing from their lived experience that they meet once a month. They are members of their, what's called the core team. They also participate on other work groups and they have been um, very strong influencers in the work of the project. And also they've been asked to participate beyond the work of the project with um, the Department of Health. So this is um, a shout out to um, the folks at Krauss, Krauss Health in Syracuse who launched Project 62 uh, a few years ago. And the, the work that they're doing and the great growth that they are um, providing at their system and addressing maternal mental health in the community. And I include them here because they will be the next um, featured um, presentation in our webinar series on December 18th. So I hope that you'll tune in there with them. We um, also did a, a special doula training there at Krauss in the community. So I hope that if you have not been um, connected with the Postpartum Resource Center, familiar with us or familiar with PSI, that you will know now that there is a statewide helpline and that we work to get women and families to the help they need in their community. So my, my closing points here then is that peer support is the cornerstone to recovery from PMATS and that a lot of women may um, be getting connected to counseling, may get connected some to um, medication management, but really it's that, um, that piece of peer support, again, that can make the difference in their recovery. Unfortunately, we know that research shows about 75% of women do go on untreated. So there is a lot of work to do. So the importance that we believe though is including peer support as a piece to further break through the, um, the stigma and get women to the help they need. Also the importance that we believe that all women as well as in the future, that dads should be included and be screened too. And then that really partnerships are key for addressing maternal mental health and getting those families that strong start. So, um, let's see. So as I started at the beginning with that um, photo and, you know, thinking that, you know, it's a very joyous time for the majority of people, but I know here that as with Jane Honickman will leave us here with her quote, it takes a whole village to raise a child, but we need to remember that it was the mother who had the baby and she and the entire family need our help. So I thank you very much to each and every one of you for the work that you're doing. And I hope with the information we shared here today that you'll further um, be able to further save lives and build fit healthy families in your community. So thank you very much, Bridget, for having me today. Well, thank you, Sonia. Um, uh, we're bumping up on time here, but I think we're willing to stay for those who'd like to stay and do some questions with Sonia. But before we move on to questions, um, 
we want to use this webinar series as a way to bring together professionals in the field of perinatal mood and anxiety disorders and grow the network. If there are some topics you would like to see in this webinar series, please go ahead and put them in the chat room now or before you log off at the end of the discussion so we have those because we want to make sure that we bring you um, topics and resources that you would like to see. And with that, um, Sonia, maybe, uh, Brittany, do you want to look at the chat room to see if there's questions or? Yeah, um, actually, yes. I was going to let you guys know we have a couple of chats. Okay. And Sonia, thank you too for sharing your personal experience. That was really incredible to see. Um, we have a couple of questions here. Um, the first one came from Dulce. She wanted to know: Are people do people seem more depressed during COVID? And what are what is New York State doing to support um, emotional support to those who are lacking health insurance? Um, well, from our experience, people are, are actually having um, much more anxiety right now, as well as depression. And I do not know um, that with the health insurance question, we would have to get back to her. Great. Thank you. Um, another question was, um, why is it so difficult to recognize or admit to being depressed or anxious during pregnancy or postpartum? So why are parents finding it difficult to admit this? Well, many times what they what we um, have heard back from parents is the the shame because um, and it may also be further um, culturally that they need to be appearing as strong people. And also, again, the, the fear of being labeled as a bad parent to be. Those would be, those would be our main reasons of the, um, the shame to reach out. Great, thank you. I have another question here from Anna. She asks, what tools are used to screen fathers? Sure, um, Anna, the um, EPDS, the Edinburgh Postnatal Depression Screening Scale, is one of the main screening tools that we suggest, and it has been validated and used in, in dads too. Thanks, Sonia. I have one more here. Um, it says, um, what do I say? So if this was a parent who was experiencing um, depression, anxiety, what would I say to friends and family who think I may be fine, but because I don't look ill, what should I say to the, my friends and family? Sure, that's a, a very good question, what to say to friends and family. And this is where we would also suggest there is a book called Beyond the Blues. And Beyond the Blues, written by um, Pekka Indman and Shoshana Bennett, they have a very good back section with different, um, different things to, to say, not to say. So a lot of times we suggest that if um, a mom or family can get that book and we um, you know, maybe go through the list there. Sometimes it's, it's helpful, just very simple open communication to let that mom know it's okay. She says to friends and family, like I'm, I'm having a rough time um, or this, I, I just need somebody to listen to me or it would be helpful if somebody came here and um, you know, spent time with me or right now with COVID, it's, you know, it's a lot of times even I, I can appreciate being on the phone with somebody or, you know, can we FaceTime? And so it's really encouraging that mom the best that she can to share, share what her needs are. Because also research has shown that it's very important that we just don't assume what that mom needs and that she is able to match up, like she shares what she's looking for, and then hopefully either friends, family, or other community supports can provide what would be, what she sees as helpful. So I hope that helps, Anna. Thank you, Sonia. Um, I have another one that just came in. Does the Postpartum Resource Center of New York provide internships for clinical mental health and counseling graduate students? Um, actually, we work with other agencies because, again, we, we are peer support, but we do work with other agencies that have interns that they are working with, and then we um, work in collaboration with them. 
We do have internships that we have worked with um, schools of public health also and schools of social work. Great, thank you. That looks like that's it from the chat. Great, thanks. Thanks so much to everybody for being here. And I greatly, again, appreciate this opportunity. And from beyond this, if there's anything that the Postpartum Resource Center of New York can do to further help you, um, we're, we're here for you. Thanks, Sonia. You have a lot of thank yous coming in through the chat, too. I just want to say thank you to Brittany also. And, and here is that, uh, the slide for December 18th, the program at Krauss Health that I mentioned in my presentation. So hope, hope that people will, will um, join us back for the webinar series. Yes, and we want to make a special note that generally our webinars are held on Wednesday mornings, but we are doing it on next Friday the 18th. So we'll send an announcement out for that tomorrow with the registration link as well as the link for the continuing education, education units. Great. Thanks, everybody. Hope you have a great day.